Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my review of Marvel Action Captain Marvel number five. But first, a few admin notes. First of all, uh, this is the I'm doing. I'm trying to get back into the habit of doing updates at the on the last day of every month for all of the campaigns that haven't shipped yet. So uh, I did Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar, which isn't. <laughs> It's not due until October, but we're still doing updates. So here is the pinup poster that comes with the book. Uh, amazing art by uh, Sashi Pertigau. I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, one, of, one of my favorite things is getting uh, pictures. You know, people show their bookcases and my books. And lots of people, they'll have like, well, now it's going to be three Jawbreakers pinups by Sashi. There's already two iron sights, so... Uh, that's always a lot of fun when I see that. And then um, I updated Pandemic. Uh, and this is a lettering proof. I uh, It's kind of funny. I work, you know, I work with a couple different colorists. I usually work with Eric Weathers, but on one project I worked with someone else, uh, another letterer. And um, this is like the new way to do proofs. I really like it. Like they put the title, the issue, the page, the letterer, and then you see the different uh, lines for uh, printing. So you want to have all of the, uh, I forget what it's called, the, the, the live area, the safe area. The innermost uh, box, that's where you want to keep all of the uh, lettering and sound effects. So speaking of Pandemic, both Do As You're Told, The Ballad of No, and Pandemic, which are in the same universe. And Do As You're Told even has a combo pack for both of the books. They're going to end on July 17th. Why? Because I have too many campaigns open at once so these are both kind of topical so it's like you know I, I feel like this is a good you, you got 17 more days to back them uh if you want to and then they're going to be like closed uh so um a couple days ago i started uh read or i i reviewed patsy walker aka hellcat uh number one and i got a good cringe video and i got really excited because i was like oh boy there's 17 issues of this run uh, so I'll do I'll do a video on each one and I read issues two and three and I, I really couldn't get much out of them uh, the only real thing is that um, there's a different straight white person who is the villain in every single one um, and uh, 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 that's basically it um, they're not really that interesting they're not that terrible so if anyone wants to pinpoint oh hey in this issue it's really bad uh, but I did notice this thing and can someone please explain what is going on with this body language and this, these facial expressions? Because Captain Marvel is, is a woman in her late 30s. She's a colonel in the Air Force. Rising through the ranks, she's still going to be late 30s before she gets that rank. Um, and uh, there's just this weird thing where they keep teaming her with teen superheroes. Like, yay, I get to hang with Captain Marvel. Um, and uh, it's not funny, it's not fun, and it's just, it's just odd. Um, now, with Kamala Khan, they do this weird thing. It's like, so you're like Miss Marvel, and I'm like Captain Marvel. So you're kind of like my daughter, kind of, because we've got the same superhero last name. Do you need a mentor? <laughs> um, it's just weird. So they keep doing this over and over again, and now we're getting a team up of Captain Marvel with the Unstoppable Wasp, who has been stopped many times because her books keep getting uh, canceled for low sales. But this is a weird one. This is actually an IDW comic. So IDW has paid for the rights to adapt a character who's already been canceled, what, in her own series twice, and also, in, wait, is Champions still going? I think, I think technically Champions is still going. It's not coming out, but it's not canceled. Um, so the story is whatever. It doesn't matter. The funny thing is that um, I wasn't quite sure. Or if you kind of skim through it very quickly, uh, it can sound like either the teenager or the 39-year-old. So I, at first I thought it was the teenager because it's teenager talk. Uh, but no, it's the 38, 39-year-old United States Air Force Colonel who is... So, quick recap on how my day is going so far. First, I'm teaching a kid who can fly how to drive. Cool. Wait, wasn't... Wasn't she taught to be an assassin? Like, they're teaching her how to kill people, but they're not teaching her how to drive cars? Okay. Um, 
Then she wrecks Tony's car after some suits from AIM show up. Also very cool. Frankly, normal and expected at this point in my life. But then, then we somehow end up smaller than one of Chewie's hairballs. And AIM keeps trying to step on me. Stellar. Really stellar day. <laughs> like, that's... There's this, um... I just got into, like, the, the recent cast, or, you know, the current cast of Saturday Night Live. Uh, and there's these two uh, buddies, uh, Kyle, Mooney, and Brett, 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 some, I don't know. He's got, like, the most, like, frat boy name. Beck Bennett. That is the most frat dude name ever. And they're, they're friends from college. They've been friends, like, 15 years. So they have this really cool, like, chemistry. And they do these uh, uh, weird skits where they're kind of, like, fake 1980s sitcoms where they're adults, but you can't really tell you know, what age they are, so it's, you had to be there. <laughs> um, but it kind of reminds me like that. It's like, the narration is for a teen or a 38-year-old who likes to talk like a teen and nothing matters. We are going to hear her say things like, do science. And uh, she's going to show absolutely, like, this, again, this is the 38-year-old commissioned officer. Did I mention that the unstoppable wasp here seems to have no idea why we're so small and no idea how to unsmall us again? Because that's definitely also a thing that's happening. Nobody, this is Twitter speak. This is Twitter speak. Oh my gosh. Um, so uh, she's shrunken and she has a a uh, teenager that she just kind of hangs with she's she's in the mix she's in the cut somehow she's just keeps it's just her and the teens it's, we're actually not supposed to act like it's weird at all so let's skip ahead basically nothing happens um the funny thing the funny sad thing about this book is a lot of these sjw books especially the ones with female leads are written with the same tone and style of a cereal box giveaway comic. The deal with the cereal box giveaway comic is it's a free giveaway. No one would ever pay for that. That's why these books fail over and over again. So again, this is the middle-aged military combat veteran saying, gather intel, do science, then fly fist first into danger. That's the unstoppable wasp way, apparently. I'm not convinced. This first always worked fine for me. Uh, so then, the actually the only real like miraculous part of this uh, or interesting part is she goes and meets uh, the girls of Girl, which is Girls in Action Research Lab and whatever. Um, and uh, the only significant part of this page is that uh, Priya Agarwal. Her plants can kick your butt. Shay Smith, her physics can kick your butt. Tina Miranda, her robots can kick your butt. Ving Lu can kick your butt. Uh, so the only significant uh, part of you know the appearance of this uh, Burger King Kids Club is that they don't mention that the two lesbians are lesbians. They somehow work that into like every other appearance they're in. So basically they're like, um, do like a science or whatever, and um, oh my gosh, these. They did like a beaker thing, that's science. And then they put like a plant, plants are science. And then they did like a ray thing, that's super duper science-y. Robots, totes science. And then they're like, yeah, you guys didn't do shit, you didn't fix anything. Yeah, we're still small, you fucking morons. And then this part is kind of cool. I forgot about this aspect. I believe it's Jeremy. No, I, I think it might have been Mark Wade introduced this. That she uh, introduced, she, oh, geez. So there were, uh, yeah, I forgot. There was a third miniseries. Well, I mean, SJW series always become miniseries. But the Mark Wade one was planned as a miniseries. Um, where I think that's where it was introduced that she has a miniaturized lab hanging from a necklace. Cool concept. I mean, all she does there is basically put something in a freaking CD-ROM uh, and read it. But yeah, so nothing happens. Um, uh, they're not even enlarged by the end. It's, we're just going to go to the end. And um, 
Then the bad guys are like, bad guy plot, happen. So, uh, yeah, so, um, uh, really like to know why Captain Marvel is suddenly the mentoring <laughs> a bunch of teens she's not uh, related to in any way. Uh, but anyway, what is it? It's a cereal box giveaway for cereal that you didn't buy. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I think I am going to do, I don't know, I even read the third one in which uh, uh, Patsy Walker fights a bed bug themed villain. But it's just really boring. Um, she has two gay guys as her pets, and the uh, the villain in every issue is just the white straight person with a speaking role. That's <laughs> it's never a mystery who the bad guy is gonna be. Did you just meet a white straight person? They're the villain. Um, so I'll probably skim around, and if anyone wants to pinpoint, it's like, oh, issue six. That one's you know that one will make a good video. Besides, I'll probably just give a couple more peeks and then probably pass. But anyway, uh, don't pass. Man, segues. I'm amazing at them. Uh, Do as you're told. The Ballad of No comic book uh, and uh, Pandemic comic book. Uh, and then Do as you're told has a combo pack for both of them. It also has this really cool uh, cloth mask. Uh, so these are going to be open until uh, July 17th. And then they are both going to close. Closed. Not switch into an in-demand store. Closed. Anyway, thanks for watching.